My name is Gary Harpster, and you're watching Understanding Wasp Nail PV, Part 3 of 4, The Wasp Benefits. Wasp Benefits, Wasp Systems improve the navigational system accuracy for en route, terminal, and approach operations all over the continental United States. There are significant portions of Alaska, Canada, and Mexico, and Caribbean as well. Navigational technology supports vertical, guided instruments which provides you with the approach to all qualified runways in the United States with ILS-like precision. It's more flexible approach and departure routing. It cuts the arrival times. More direct, which becomes fuel efficient and a timely routing through the ATC network. Nav sources, it provides a navigational source for EGPWS, TAWS, and ADSB. Significant government cost savings. These are some of the benefits of WAS. Airport Benefits WAS offers an opportunity for airports to gain ILS-like approach capability with a minimal outlay of cash. Roughly, it costs about $80,000 to put a WAS approach into an airport, whereas an ILS typically costs over a million dollars. No consideration is needed to be given to the placement of the navigational facility, maintenance, or clear zones around the facility or access for the maintenance. The WAS operational benefits that allow GPS to be used as a primary means of navigation from takeoff through CAT-1 precision. No longer is it necessary for you to use DME or VOR for an overlay approach. You can use a WAS receiver as the sole means of navigation. The signal going into that system is so accurate you no longer need DME or VOR for a backup. It removes GPS rain prediction which reduces pilot workload. All pilots are required to check the GPS reliability along their route of flight and at their terminal area if they intend to use GPS for the approach. If you go to the FAA webpage, you'll see a map that shows that there's large holes across the United States periodically where there's no GPS coverage. WAS also enables more direct to operations, providing significant potential and fuel savings. A lot of times when you're flying near the mountains or high power lines, or anything that could interfere with your navigational performance that you currently offer, WAS receivers automatically calculate precision so it's not necessary to worry about the types of interferences that we run into today. It allows pilots to flight plan GPS approaches to destinations as well as alternate airports, saving time and money again. So if you can't get into your primary airport because of weather, because of too many aircraft in the pattern, you can file to your alternate airport, and if it has a WAS approach, get the same precision as an ILS. Access to all RNAV and GPS approaches. There's currently over 1,975 approaches that you can take advantage of. It allows approaches at smaller airports at night with no local altimeter settings. As you know, if the temperature gets too far below zero, the barometric altitude can change, sometimes as much as two to 300 feet. So with the GPS WASP receiver, you no longer need to worry about that correction. Fuel saving scenario. It's more flexible for departure and arrival procedures and offers more direct to routes. An approach to intended airports, not served by an ILS, but now served with a WASP LPV approach. You don't have to route to an alternate. Approaching destination airports with weather below ILS or WASP minimums Filing alternate airports with WAS and LPV that may be closer to the original destination, shorter route. Is it for you? WAS by itself offers a lot of benefits. Even if your aircraft's not capable of handling the LPV signal, WAS by itself does offer some advantages. It does provide sole source navigation, no DME or VOR needed. It eliminates the rain prediction, those big holes across the United States I was talking about earlier. It offers more direct to operation. It's more flexible departure and arrival. LP approaches filed as alternates also become your advantage. More airports serve with LPV approaches now than there are ILSs. That's a big factor. If you're flying into an airport now that's currently served by an ILS, you can maintain flying into that airport. But if the weather goes below minimums and you can no longer get into that, how far do you have to fly to get to an alternate airport? If you get on the FAA webpage, you can check and see if the areas that you frequently fly into offer WAS and LPV solutions. My guess is that they will. With 1,975 approaches, 
pretty likely that there's going to be an airport closer than anything that you've previously been able to use as an alternate airport that will be served by a WAS approach. Would more airports benefit my operation? It depends. If the airport that you currently fly into is not served by a WAS approach, check to see what alternate airport you typically would fly into. More than likely, it does have a WAS approach. And you may find out that if you can't get into your primary airport, traveling just a few miles to an airport served by a WAS approach could be to your advantage. As the FAA continues to transition from ground-based to space-based navigation, WAS and LPV are the preferred navigation systems of the future. All navigation that we have in the United States right now, if it's not a WAS receiver, isn't precise enough to meet the next-gen requirements. The next-gen requirements is trying to unburden the existing congestion that we have in the airways, trying to give people the best altitudes and the best tailwinds that they can possibly give them. And the only way that they can do that is more precise lateral and vertical navigation. WAS receivers are the answer to that solution. For more information, call a Duncan Aviation expert at 800-228-4277 or visit duncanaviation.aero slash WAS for additional information.